Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. Hi, I'm Tracy Lynn, and this is our summer-long staycation destination series. Every Friday during the noon report, we'll spotlight a staycation destination that's not far from home and won't break the bank. This week, we're taking you to Heritage Village of the Southern Finger Lakes in Corning, New York. I'm Sean Lukasik. I'm the board president at the Corning Paint and Post Historical Society, and we're also the arbiters of Heritage Village of the Southern Finger Lakes. Guided tours take place Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and you need to call ahead to make arrangements. However you arrive at Heritage Village, you'll find the oldest building in Corning, New York, The Ben Patterson Inn was built in 1796. It's over 225 years ago. And we have lots of displays, sometimes programs and demonstrations that happen in the inn. You get to see a little bit about what life was like for not only the innkeepers, Ben and Sarah Patterson, but also for the travelers who came up to our region to search for land parcels to purchase in the early 1800s. Also, as part of our village, you'll get to visit a one-room schoolhouse, an original blacksmith shop, a log cabin. These are all structures that have been moved to the village from different parts of the region, but they are all original buildings. And then we've got a couple of buildings that have been more recently built, but built in the style of different periods from the mid-1800s all the way up through the mid-1900s. So it's a great opportunity to kind of check out different stages and how people lived and how people spent their daily lives at different points in our region's history. Yeah, and starting with early American life. So after the American Revolution was completed, we were a new nation, and that is what people can see in the Patterson Tavern. Yeah, that's right. Now, the land that the Benjamin Patterson Inn is built on, uh, of course, was first inhabited by the Native Americans, and they were pushed out during the Sullivan campaign uh, when they came through our region. However, they left a lot of traditions. They left a lot of knowledge with the people who eventually would settle here. And so when you come to visit, you'll see a lot of interesting signs of how people learned from Native Americans when they did ultimately build on the land that was once theirs. Sean, what were some of the tribes that were here in this area before they were moved out, and do you know where they went? Uh, I don't, and I don't want to answer that question incorrectly. I can find that out for you. Yeah, no uh, worries. So the Sullivan campaign, that was part of the Revolutionary War, correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. What's unique? Like, what stands out to you? What's one of your favorite parts about the inn or the village? I would say, you know, when we have events going on or when we have school programs, that's when the village really comes alive. So not only do people get a chance to, of course, see and experience the different displays and things, but that's when the demonstrations are going on. That's when you can see traditional hearth cooking the way it would have been done in the early 1800s. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when you get to see the blacksmith shop in action. We have volunteers who are often spinning wool and showing how that's done, and they're quite experts at it, um, so that's fun to watch. And in the schoolhouse, we have programs where people can use the old desks and chairs that were there and, and learn about stoking the fire in the winter and, and how kids kept warm throughout the school day. There's just so many great things to see and interact with, especially when the events are going on. And those are some of my favorite times. Do you have some of those events that are coming up or events you want to highlight? Yeah, the next event that we have coming up is at the end of September. It's our annual Heritage Festival. People can come and see all the different things that Heritage Village has to offer, as well as additional demonstrations, vendors, music, and a whole variety of activities. And that's at the end of September. And, you know, going on all summer long from now through Labor Day, we've got the Agnes Flood exhibition on display inside the Ben Patterson Inn. So anyone who comes to visit between now and Labor Day will get a chance to check out that exhibition as well. Yeah, let's talk about Agnes. What happened was Tropical Storm Agnes, as it was called at that time, came up along the East Coast and then kind of parked itself in this 
region. In Corning and Painted Post, we have the convergence of three different rivers that then turn into the Shemung River and seven inches of rain over three days turned into the equivalent of about a 40-foot rise in the early hours of June 23, 1972. The Shemung River broke through those levees and the wall of water started moving through the valley here. And because it was during the early hours of the morning, the alarms and things didn't happen with enough time to warn everybody adequately. So it was just uh, a really difficult day. One of the things that is kind of interesting and more of a fun memory of the recovery efforts in the days after the flood is that, of course, we didn't have any drinking water because the entire infrastructure was wiped out. And we also didn't have bottled water in 1972. So one of the ways that we got water to the community is thanks to the Genesee Brewing Company in Rochester. They filled their beer bottles with water and shipped them down here. So we had thousands and thousands of cases of drinkable water in Genesee beer bottles. And I know a lot of people who were young at the time laugh when they think back on drinking out of beer bottles when they were just kids. Um, And that was kind of a fun memory for a lot of people at that time. And uh, if you come check out our exhibition, we still have some of those unopened bottles that were sent down here from Genesee Brewings. And that's, of course, just another example, too, of communities helping each other out We saw neighbors helping neighbors. We saw people who were trying to rebuild their own homes, but also contributing to nonprofit organizations, to uh, trying to preserve and save artwork that was destroyed at the Corning Museum of Glass, and just so many examples of people stepping up to help each other out. Sometimes it's those worst tragedies that bring out the best in humans. Yeah, We have an exhibition on display all summer through Labor Day. So how much does it cost to come visit everything that there is to see here at at Heritage Village of the Southern Mm -hmm. Finger Lakes? And where can we learn more? General admission for adults is $8. And we have different prices for seniors, for students. And of course, it's always free for members. Um, People can learn about visiting the Heritage Village and about becoming a member on our website at Heritage Village SFL. Dot org That stands for Heritage Village Southern Finger Lakes. And we have all sorts of information on our website. That's where you could also join as a member if you're interested and you get free admission year round for that. So if people want to volunteer because they love early American history, they can connect with you too. Yeah, we always need docents. We always need volunteers, people to help out with school programs. If you're interested in Anything from gardening to hearth cooking to blacksmithing, working with kids or helping out at events, we have lots of opportunities. We hope you've enjoyed coming along on our staycation destination. You can hear all the podcasts online. Join us next week as we visit a destination in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania.